Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessie and welcome to a new video. I wanted to switch my intro up a little bit because I have a cute hat, cute mirror. Today I have a very exciting video for you all. Last week I uploaded my Jeffree Star Banana Fetish Palette review and some looks and a lot of people really enjoyed it and I thought it would be fun to sit down and rank all of my current Jeffree Star eyeshadow palettes. I have 18 different palettes, 19 technically. I have a duplicate of one but you will see that in a second. So if you want to see where all the Jeffree palettes lie in my heart then just keep watching. As a preface, makeup is subjective to the individual. So if your favorite palette doesn't rank in the same spot that my favorite palette is ranking, then please don't be offended, it is just makeup. I also try not to think too hard about my ranking and where I was putting each palette. So even tomorrow, my thoughts might change on these. This is just my initial thoughts from today when I was sitting down and laying them all out and thinking about how I enjoy using them. I've definitely had different palettes change spots over the years, but this is my current up-to-date ranking of all of them. Coming in at number 18, I actually have the two mini controversy palettes. So I have the original one. This is the one that I've used and I think of when I think of the mini controversy. I did enjoy this one a little bit when I first got it and I have to say when I first first got it like the first week I had this palette I got this one and the conspiracy around the same time and I use this one more than the conspiracy but in my opinion I just feel like these shades can't make a complete cohesive look I feel like you have a lot of starters like you have these neutrals and this really pretty diet root beer shade gorgeous and you also have some blues and purples but I just can't see myself using this palette just on its own I feel like I have to have the conspiracy when I pull this one out to create cohesive looks or I have to pull some other shadows into my into my look but this one is ranking on the bottom for that reason I also have the emerald one this is why I decided to rank them in the same spot I've only ever swatched the emerald shade I got this I believe in the Halloween mystery box unboxing I don't remember which one but I will link it in the cards if you are interested in checking that video out aside from the green it's pretty much the same exact palette so I'm ranking these at the bottom number 17 I feel like I might get some backlash for but it is the banana palette. I, like I said, reviewed this last week on my channel and I enjoyed the looks I came up with, but the reason this is ranking so low is just, it's a quality issue for me. I feel like a lot of the shades, they're all very different, but it's hard to tell that they're different because of the packaging color. The packaging is such a bright yellow shade that it's really hard to see the tones truly in the pans without swatching them first. So I really had to actually think about the looks I was doing. And even when I thought about them, I feel like I was still disappointed with some of the shades. Bulge, the blue shade was rather disappointing as was a couple of these other neutrals. They just didn't blend out very well. I like the color story and I definitely have used this palette since that review was filmed, but it's definitely not my favorite. Number 16 is the Androgyny palette. I'm actually not sure if this one is still being made. This was my first Jeffree palette ever, and it is also my least used Jeffree palette ever. I enjoy the color story. It intrigues me. It gives me very much subculture ABH vibes, but I don't use this one all that often, so that is why I have it ranking so low. I like Safe Word. This is one of my favorite taupey shades for like a no makeup makeup look. And I also really like the greens and blues in this palette. They're gorgeous. But as a whole, I can't remember the last time I've actually wanted to use this and reached for it on my own accord. I definitely don't want to declutter it because I enjoy the Jeffree Star formula, but it is definitely not a fave. Number 15 is the Thirsty palette. Another controversial opinion, I, I think. I love this palette. I love the mattes in this palette. I love this top row, this coral neutrally situation is gorgeous. And even this bottom row with the neutrals and the pop of yellow and the pops of blue and green. The thing I don't like about this palette is the shimmer row. I remember when this came out and I purchased it when it came out initially. And I remember him saying that he tried a different shimmer formula for this middle row and that it was supposed to be really dreamy and really metallic. And if I am honest, I don't love the shimmer formula. This is probably my least favorite shimmer formula Jeffrey has done. I did rank it above the others because I do really like the mattes and have reached into the mattes frequently, but I just, 
I don't like the shimmers. The shimmers are a third of the palette and because of that, it is ranking number 15. Number 14 goes to Miss Blue Blood. Another opinion that I think might, might get some backlash. I actually really love this palette. I love the color story. The thing is, is I feel like I love blue looks on myself, but I don't love blue looks on myself when I'm wearing colorful hair. Like when I have my colorful wigs or this, this is my actual hair, it's not a wig, but when I have my hair actually colored, colorful colors, I feel like blue doesn't always mesh super well with the colors of my hair. I feel like blue only looks good on me when I have blonde hair. I do love the selection of blues in here and it is my favorite blue palette, but I just don't reach for it all that often. It is ranking where it is for that reason. Number 13 hurts my heart a little tiny bit because I have reviewed this one on my channel as well, but this is the Pink Religion palette. I love pink. Pink is my favorite color. I'm very much a pink queen up in here. And this color story is gorgeous. I mean, it looks like a freaking Bible. Like it's so cool. The packaging is great. The pans are beautiful. I love that you have like the crosses and the stained glass window and all those pinks. They're gorgeous, girl. Like I'm obsessed. The problem I have with this palette, I feel like so negative being like the problem with this one. The thing that I don't love about this palette is the staining. I know it's not a huge deal, but I do different looks every single day. And sometimes when I've worn this palette, it stains so bad that even if I put a full coverage concealer over it and set the crap out of that and try and color correct with some like pastel eyeshadows before going in with my look, it still has that pinky purple hue. And I, I love it but I don't know if I love it that much. I do like the colors. The quality is great. They blend like a dream. I also haven't tried every single shade in this palette, so I feel weird ranking it higher without having tried a few of the shades. So for that reason, it is ranked where it is. Palette number 12 goes to the Orgy palette, and this is such a fun palette. This has every neutral you could ever want. I would say the majority is warmer toned. You do have quite a few cool tone neutrals in there, but I love that this palette is so easy. Whenever I have a pan those eyeshadows shade, that is a neutral shade and I'm trying to find other neutrals to work with it. I can always dip into this palette and find something to use. You can use this for a one and done look, super, super easy, or you can use this in conjunction with other palettes. And I do like that this is literally the nude vault that could add to anybody's collection. I find that a lot of the shades in here are very unique. I use a lot of these uh, yellowy tones, vanilla latex and voyeurism for correcting under my eyes. If I feel like my eyes have dark circles, I also use some of these like pinkies. If I have a little bit of a green eyeshadow stain on my eyes, you can do a lot of color correcting on the eyelids and also kind of contour the eyes as well. So I feel like it's a very versatile, all around good palette. I did get this one in my Valentine's Day Jeffree Star unboxing and I was so excited to get it. It is definitely a staple in my collection. Palette number 11 is the Star Ranch palette. I really like the colors in this one. This one is so fun. This was in the Summer Mystery Boxes last year, I believe, 2021. And I did purchase my mystery box so I could get this palette and I've really enjoyed using it. I used this one a lot when I went to Reno last summer for an entire month. The colors of this palette just go so well together. You have the neutrals, but you also have the blue. So I feel like you can do a blue look, a neutral look, or kind of a pop in between look. The green in this palette too is so gorgeous. It's like that mossy sage green and I'm obsessed. I feel like the quality of this is so good and it definitely didn't get as much hype as it deserved. I love this one and Yak Farm, such a good shade. If you like twig from the ABH Sultry, you'll love the shade Yak Farm. It is such a good shade. I love the versatility of this palette and it's always challenging my creative juices. Coming in at number 10, we have Miss Cremated palette. And the reason I ranked her right in the middle at number 10 is because I love the palette. I love all the grungy tones. I just feel like I don't reach for this one as much as I reach for the others. So pretty much from here onward, it wasn't a matter of quality issues. It was more a matter of which ones do I reach for and frequently use more than others. I feel like this can give you the perfect smoky eye. You have such a good range from literally the blackest black to pure white and everything in between. You have grungier 
nice dark neutrals and I can really appreciate the palette. I feel like a lot of my looks end up turning out very similar and in the spring and summer months I don't typically wear as many darker smoky eyes but I did bring this palette out quite a few times this past winter and I do think it's a good addition to my collection. I don't have any other palettes in my entire collection like this so I am happy to have this one as well. At number nine we have Cremated's older sister and this is the Jawbreaker palette. She is very loved. I have a pan in orange juice this bright orange shade literally the best orange shimmer ever I can really appreciate this palette I've seen people rearrange their palette to have it more cohesive and I definitely like using those pictures as references as to where the shades fall when you just kind of look at it all jumbled it's definitely a little confusing but I do like this one for the sake that it has just about every rainbow shade you could need you have your pure yellow, your orange, your red, there's blues and greens and purples. I love the pastel shades and kind of these funky neon shades in here as well. They're just so much fun and I feel like you can do so many different looks with this. I have really enjoyed using this one and whenever I need a rainbow palette or a certain color that's not in another palette if I'm doing a rainbow look, usually I can find it in this palette. So for that reason, it is ranking at number nine. The number eight spot is going to the Blood Loss palette. This is one of the prettiest packaging I've ever seen in eyeshadow. It's this really pretty purpley crushed velvet. You have all the really pretty purples. I love pink and purple eyeshadow. I mean, I'm wearing pink and purple today. It's literally my favorite color combo. I love the colors in here. I've used every shade in here several times over and I'm never disappointed with my looks with this one. It was definitely a lot of fun. There were some new formulas with these like wet shimmers when this palette came out and I really enjoyed those. I like all of these lavendery shades. This periwinkle shade is a lot of fun. This one is just very bulky and hard to store. So as much as I love the quality, I feel like just the packaging, while I can appreciate it from an artistry standpoint, is definitely inconvenient. So I did have to rank it in the number eight spot because I feel like I don't reach for it as much as the others because of the packaging. Slot number seven goes to a relatively recent palette and this is the Weirdo palette. I love this palette, like don't get me wrong, I love this palette. I've loved every single look I've ever done with this palette. Razor Blade is one of the prettiest silver shades ever, in my humble opinion, and these dark grungy tones, so gorgeous. I really don't have any complaints about this one. I feel like all the looks are gorgeous. You can usually do all matte looks with this palette, which is what I normally end up doing, or you can use the silver to add like a pop of sparkle. And I feel like there's just a lot of variety and different techniques you can try with this palette. I wouldn't say it's a top favorite, but I also don't hate it. So that is why it is number seven. I'm actually wearing the sixth palette on my eyelids today. Can you guess which one it is? It's the Beauty Killer 2. I'm obsessed with this palette. It has one of my favorite color stories Jeffrey has ever done. I love that it has those big pan sizes and it really pushes me creatively. Like looking at this palette, it's hard to think of cohesive looks that I can do. Like nothing is gonna be super monochromatic or cohesive. There's so much variety in here and I've had so much fun trying to come up with color combinations. Today, I used the pink shade in the inner half of my lid. I used this purple shade on the outer part. I tapped this purpley blue shimmer kind of on the lid a little bit. I used Respect This Cream all over the lid. I used Under Oath under my eye. And I topped it off with Self Expression, this really pretty yellowy lime shade right in the inner corner. I feel like it's worn off a little bit, but I really enjoy this palette. It's definitely one of the most confusing palettes I own, but it's also one of the most fun because it challenges me to come up with new looks and I feel like I'm never disappointed in the looks I come up with. Palette number five goes to the Mini Breaker palette. This is the perfect fall palette. When I tell you this has everything you need for fall, you have those really pretty caramely shades with the mustard and the brown and the bronze. And then you have all the beautiful, beautiful purples. Purple and orange just look so cute together. I love the color story of this. I feel like the quality of this palette was amazing. This is one of my favorites and I love to use this one when traveling. It's so convenient to take with me if I need just a fun, colorful palette. If I'm going somewhere, I normally pick it as my colorful palette and then pick another one for my neutral palette, but I really enjoy the color story in this. It is definitely an innovative palette in my collection. We're getting into my staples now. I actually asked Antonio which one he thought was my most used palette or like my favorite palette, and I think we had the same top palettes. So in the number four slot, we have Blood Sugar. This is 
just a really good everyday palette. I wouldn't say it is mind boggling, the color story. I mean, it's all pretty neutral and red, but it is just the most perfect everyday palette and to have everything I could want, especially as someone that loves those pinky red tones. I can do any sort of everyday look and have all of my shades in one spot, which I really like. I really like the quality of this one. Glucose is one of my favorite white shades in my collection and I've really enjoyed playing with some of the others. There's no crazy blinding shimmers. I feel like it's all very natural, but I do use this on a quick everyday basis, especially if I don't wanna put much effort into my eye look, I can just reach into this palette and I already know like six or seven looks right off the top of my head that I enjoy. Number three is the Blood Bunny palette. Again, I remember when this one came out, I feel like I've purchased just about all of these around launch time, but this one is so fun. I feel like greens really complement my skin tone. I feel like I have just the right undertone to my skin that these types of green shades always look so good. And I love the variety of greens in here. At the time that this came out, I was super into green eyeshadow, so of course I lost my crop over it. But this has just so many unique greens. You have like the lime and the chartreuse and the emeralds and these blue greens and the grungy greens. And you have all sorts of really pretty deeper shades to deepen it up. The shimmers in here are a lot of fun. You have like that subtle shimmer formula, but you also have a really glittery formula right here with Money Heist, such a good shade. And this packaging alone is probably my favorite packaging Jeffrey has done. It literally is just the most gorgeous, luxurious trunk I've ever seen. We are down to the final two. Does anyone want to pick a guess as to which two palettes I'm going to talk about? Specifically, which one is my top palette? In the number two spot, we have the Conspiracy palette. I literally bent over backwards to get this when it came out. I had to go to a Morphe store and they just so happened to get a shipment the second I got there and it was sold out by the time I left but I was able to get both the Conspiracy and the Mini Controversy palettes, and I really enjoyed this one. I would definitely say this one also has a relatively confusing color story to me. Aside from this top row, I feel like these bottom two rows just don't really make a lot of sense, but this was the palette that I took with me when I went to Reno last summer, and I used this every single day. I used Tanacon every single day. I used Ranch every single day. I used my rides here pretty much every single day. And I really grew to appreciate this palette and I really like the looks that I can come up with. And now that I've used it and used all the shades and really appreciated it, I feel like I like this palette a lot more. I definitely love the looks I've come up with and I feel like this one's also very versatile. You can do fun, colorful looks. I think when I went to the Reno Pride Parade last year, I wore this palette. I did like some of the pinks and reds and oranges and stuff, but she is my number two palette. I love her to death. And in my number one slot, guys, we have the Alien palette. This one is no longer available. I am obsessed with this palette. This is cool tone girl heaven. We have those greens and purples and teals and all these beautiful grungy shades. I really like this. Has has dog hair in it. I really like this palette. This one was so innovative and actually when this came out I had posted a picture of it on my Instagram and it was the first picture that Jeffrey Lynn himself liked my, my photo. I remember that to this day. I know that was like, what, six years ago, but I remember it. I'm very sad this palette is no longer available. It breaks my heart. It is truly one of my favorite palettes in my entire collection, but there is no competition. It is my favorite Jeffree palette of all time. That is all for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for joining me and chatting with me about some palettes. Let me know what your favorite Jeffree palette is or where you would rank things, what palettes you have in your collection. I always love to see where other people place their palettes. It was so much fun ranking these. I hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know if you want me to do ranking for any other brands as well. And with that, I will see you guys all later. Bye friends.